We've got a right video for you installed today. Whilst desserts are cooking, we've had a pleasant surprise. We've got gusts of about 30 miles per hour tonight. Something to do with a snake. It's something to do with a snake anyway. We did what no man should probably do. We've lost the path. I think just in the fog, we can just see little rusty parts. Wow, that was a uh, powerful stuff. Absolute nightmare. So I've asked Sean to close his mouth and his legs. We want to get a camp with a view of that. Midges in the tent and they're just swarming around, biting me. But I feel like a human pin needle. Bag of white powder. Absolutely windy this morning. And we're back out again, sprucing up your Sunday as always. I'm out again. Shawnee brought back Marsden. I know what you're thinking. Oh, stop doing camp with friends and stuff. I don't want to see them. Just want to see you, Mr. Spruce. And I hear you. And I'm thinking about fobbing them all off, honestly. But without this guy behind me, then I wouldn't be out. And I probably won't be doing another video for a very long time without his support. But I'll worry about that later. As you can tell, we're right by a busy road. So I'll bring you back once we're off the side of the road. But we've got a right video for you installed today. And I'll explain a bit more about what I just said later on. Right then, now that we're off that road, it is still a bit windy. So we are up for a special one. This is something that Sean has been wanting to do for a while myself included and we're off to the b29 overexposed plane crash site now it's probably nothing that you haven't seen before on youtube but we decided to do it anyway this one's for us not for the tube although i'm taking you along with me anyway sean has brought out his uh, van's walking shoes and of course it's swampy and muddy along the paths they're quite steep as well, so we need to be careful. Some loose rocks. So uh, I guarantee Sean is going to go over five or six times. <laughs> well, these paths are quite steep. So it's not the best weather out, as you can tell by the sky above me. But we decided to go out anyway, because we're free and why not? We've got gusts of about 30 miles per hour tonight. But the tent should be fine, and if not, I've already offered Tony to bunk in with me. He's in the Lanshan 1, and I'm in the Starav 2 that Gaz gave me. So, the weather isn't brilliant, it's not absolutely chucking it down, but it is quite windy and very foggy. So we'll see if we can get some drone shots later on, but I'm not promising you anything. And as always, I've managed to find us a place where there isn't actually a direct path. Curtis special as Shawnee calls it comes with not having remembering to bring the map I did say when we set off that I'd forgotten something and it turns out it was it was only the map and it'd be all right if OS worked on my phone but we're in a place with absolutely no signal well, I'll come back to this no signal bit later on I want to tell you about it we think this is the path I'm gonna risk it first because Sean is boots. Yeah, we're alright, we're alright. My boots are perfect. They're not really boots though, are they? Never leaked one. What material are they made out of? Shoe material. Odds on you walking through that. We've just had a look behind us and we're not counting on any views because we're in the cloud. Look at it. It's just cloud and fog. Still though. I've got the best view there is. Thanks man. <laughs> Shawnee brought back Mars then everybody. <laughs> still though, seeing that there's no views and stuff, there's something pretty still about 
the no view side of things, the seeing the cloud and having a complete white out, it's still quite beautiful to be in and see. It's not so great for you guys, I suppose, because all you're seeing is a bit of grass. Me. And some unwilling participant. Where is he? There he is. And also the, the clag rolling in. I'm closing up now over the tops. Still can't see anything though. It's times like these when we come to a junction that I kind of wish had the map. But uh, to be fair, we're not headed in any, you know, any particular direction. We can just go anywhere we want. It all meets up around the same place. We're just up here for a camp, getting up on the tops. As long as we can work our way back down to the car after, that's fine. Although I would really like to try and find that plane. So let's see what we can do about that, shall we? Sean is seeing if he can get a signal. It's not looking likely. Got his Tinder on the go. Talking to his birds before we lose signal forever. Tell your mum I said hi. Pen and way, pen and way. That's right, if you know, you know. So, according to what I've seen on Google, that's my finger. Just kidding, good joke though. It's a little joke there for you people. Over there in the distance, that little lump, that's where we're headed. I think that is where the plane crashed. So, we're going to head that, head that direction anyway. We've got a bit of spitting coming through, so I've asked Sean to close his mouth and his legs. And then if the rain gave up as well, that would be nice. See it a bit better now. If we can try and camp somewhere on there, I'd be loving it. But, like I said, Sean is in a trekking pole tent. I'm not, I'm not entirely certain it'll hold up. We'll have to see if we get over there, but if we can just camp right on the edge. They're lovely, man. They're lovely. Putting his little hat on to keep his ears warm. Tell you what, if you haven't taken up the walk from Snakes Pass Road or Snake, yeah, Snakes Road, whatever road it is, you'll figure it out. Something to do with a snake. It's something to do with a snake anyway. If you haven't taken up the walk from there up towards Bleep Wow for, via the Pennine Way, then you should do. It's absolutely lovely. I mean, it is very windy, but a lot of it has like two walls in between. And because of that, You've got less wind on you, so we're actually quite sweating now. Getting a bit of a sweat on. Let's talk about Shawnee's new pants. They're a bit short, I got them in the kids section, obviously. But no, they're, they're three quarters, 23 pounds from Matalan. Oh, and they're sort of semi-waterproof material. Loads of pockets. Loads of pockets, although he said that the foam pockets on the wrong side. And it comes with a belt, as if. Bargain. And, not to mention, it gets his big whopper in there as well. We should have gone over there because the sun's just peeking up through the valley. It is beautiful though. We've just used one of the world's resources of maps. We did what no man should probably do. We asked for directions. We're on a good path anyway, we're on a solid path. So yet again, no matter what, out. As long as we never leave it, we should be fine because it's a solid path, direct route, and we can always find our way back if needs be. So, as long as we never leave it, we should be okay. And we've lost the path, we're sort of <laughs> trailing through swamp now and little bits of river and stuff. So, so much for staying on it, I guess. 
we found some little bits of game trails and stuff like that so we're just going to continue along them and hope for the best but it's just stream after stream and walking through all this it's not ideal yet again curse is curse We've got ourselves lost we're well and truly lost now but just the views are still great it's just little caverns everywhere we're gonna keep slumping on through the muddy little bits and you know, it's a good thing we've both got great footwear on in its honour. It is. Yeah. Tell you what we need to do, we need to start a little GoFundMe to buy Shawnee some great boots, don't we? Not wrong with my van. Absolute nightmare. That's my knee. And we need Shawnee to pull me out. I'm waterproofing your shoes now. I've got water going in them. <laughs> I look like half of the bloody whatever Merlin's monster. One leg's heavier than the other. Can you tell I've fallen in somewhere or do you think it's just... Do you, do you reckon you can't tell? You won't be able to tell, will you? No, I think you're fine. Passing, it'll be fine. That's just karma, in it, for winding Shawnee up all the time about his boots. Nice and dry feet. The beauty is my feet still feel pretty dry. Um, so hats off to these mammoths. They're not going to be dry when I start dipping them in water, though. If we can find some sort of waterfall. Just so happens now that there's no rain. Investing some gear, as they said, wouldn't have made a difference, would it? problem is now I've done that I'm debating whether I should put it on the blooper reel and you'll see it later on in the video I'll just put it in who knows you walk down. absolutely stunning round here a little windy though I think just in the fog we can just see little rusty parts of the plane. We're here then. There's just bits everywhere. I still don't think this is where all the chunk of it is. So we're just going to continue a bit further up. But with all the fog and the mist, it's definitely eerie. The B-29 Bleak Lao bomber crash site features the remains of a US Air Force Super Fortress aircraft which crashed in November 1948 during a routine domestic flight between bases within the UK. Sites warn that sections of the route are unsurfaced and may be wet or boggy following periods of long rain. With my leg currently knee deep in mud, I believe that this statement is definitely true. The aircraft ruins themselves include an engine turbine and a portion of the body of the plane. This remains to be a place of memorial where several airmen lost their lives and under no circumstances should any items be displaced or taken away from the crash site. The aircraft crashed at higher shelf stones at Bleak Plow Moland, just over Glossop as it was re-modified as a reconnaissance aircraft and was taking photos of the area on November the 3rd 1948, over 80 years ago, and the remains are still in good condition today. Wow, that was a uh, powerful stuff, wasn't it, Shauna? Feeling really sad. Yeah, it's quite quite emotional. Kind of puts a lot of stuff into perspective, really. If you think about it, you know, we live in a strange world and things are changing every day. And sometimes those changes, those sudden changes, can cause problems and people can lose their lives over it. Nothing's set in stone in this place, in this world and in our lifetime. But it was well worth the trek coming up and getting lost to find it. It was well worth it. 
even if it did mean that I had to get half covered and become a quarter of the swamp monster. Right, now it's time for us to find somewhere, drop down off the top maybe a little bit and find somewhere to camp for the night. We'll get set up. We haven't got anything special to cook tonight. We've just got some packets of chicken tikka and rice. A few non-campers out there that haven't seen those packets before, then you know it might be something different for you and interesting. But for you camping nerds that have seen it before, then you know, note new to you. So then, update on the leg. I don't know if I can see you. Oop, here we go, almost went off. Um, update on the leg then. There he is, look. It's drying out now to the point where I could probably flake it off soon. Hoping to find some sort of stream or something to dip it in. Get a good dip. Just about to walk into a swampy bit and Shawnee goes, Watch out! Where were you about two hours ago? So, I might be feeling down now, but if we use the thumbnail that I plan on using, then you might see that I've got something to peak me up a bit later. Something to look forward to when we get to camp. But is it what you think it is? Is it what I've probably tried to make you believe it is? Or is it something else entirely? We found somewhere to wash off my uh, leg. Mini pool of running water. It's in a bit of a swampy area, so it's still a bit dirty, but it's better than uh, anything else, really, that we can find. And because uh, it's dirty, I don't mind dirtying it up a bit. I'm just unsure whether I should try and take my sock and my boot off first. Yeah. So, I think I'm going to start by washing off the boot. So I am going to take the boot off. I want to see what sort of state my sock is in. Big reveal on the sock. Way, hey, that's pretty clean, isn't it? That's a lot cleaner than we thought it was going to be. I have brought spare socks as well. Let's get the foot in, shall we? Whoa! It's like a leg reveal, isn't it? It's freezing. Didn't mix up, did we? So, yeah, after that fiasco, we're back on the move. Now, I'm not going to lie, my feet are rubbing just slightly from the moisture now that we've set off back walking again. I feel like pink. And my leg is absolutely freezing because the breeze is hitting the cold water. But I think we can say safely that the boots that I've always spoke highly about deserve an absolutely top star rating. The Mammoths, Mammot boots, you just can't say enough about them because they're absolutely amazing. Shawnee says he hopes he can get signal where we're going because currently we've got none and he wants to watch YouTube. He says he wants to watch instructions on how to assemble his tent, the Lanshan 1. Decisions, decisions. Do we go down into the valley where there looks to be a flat bit or do we rough and pick a bit of a, a sort of less enjoyable, more scenic. more scenic route. So it's a more scenic and more viewer and it's lovely up here, but the ground isn't the best for pitching tents. I suppose if we go down, we can always check, can't we? 
the beauty about being off the beaten track is the views are just so much better and we're less likely to cause any havoc but the paths are just obviously more treacherous so you need to take your care when coming down hills there's no rush don't let the don't let the sun coming down and the timing and stuff and the sunset be like a fear factor for you you need to make sure whenever you're doing anything in the outdoors nothing is for certain you need to make sure that you're looking after yourself first because you can always walk by torchlight slower but if you've got a busted ankle or a broken leg you're not doing any walking at all so just take your time watch where you're going and make it safe no matter what watch where you're going not into a camera not into a camera is right we've made it down safe and it, yet again it's just beautiful strangely though it's a bit more windy down here so it is strange but it's just water peaceful it's lovely we've just come up that steep hill to this path to try and find a spot but I'm looking over there now I'm thinking some flat spots over there so maybe we should go back down and up on the other side Shawnee or should we just risk this side? We're on this side now <laughs> We're on this side now, I had a feeling I'd say something along those lines I think I've killed him off, look He's lost him Go on Agis! Oh, Shawnee, whoever I'm with Can't tell, we always fall far behind these days Just kidding guys So, although it is beautiful over there, that waterfall is absolutely stunning and we've decided screw the views over there, we want to get a camp with a view of that. So we've come up, we went down, we've come back up again, headed back down. Orne has got his foot caught in the bog look. Just, just my foot. What an idiot! <laughs> Imagine that! Imagine getting your foot stuck in a bog on a hiking trip! Oh, Belter! Right, it's getting a bit windy. Rain's coming down a little bit. I'm not gonna bore you by doing shots, putting up the tent and stuff like that. It's the Starav 2. I'll show you the tent when it's up. You've seen it before. Let's throw it up, shall we? Here we are then, tent is up. It's a beautiful spot. Sean has not got his tent up yet, but I'll give him an hand. There's still a few hikers in the area walking around. We're hoping that we're not too much of a disturbance to them, so. But we're pitched now, so unless they're gonna tell us to move to the landowner, here we are for the night. Tents are up, both of them, and uh, the views have gone. Absolute typical fog. Can barely see the waterfall, but what do you expect, eh? No, it's perfect when we're out camping. Sean is pitched on a very slopey bit. And the problem is with the land shans, you'll find is that when you pitch on a slope, none of it gets taut. It's really tough. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to just raise the pole up just to give it a bit more tension at the top. And there we go, look. It's done nothing. Absolutely nothing. We've raised it by five centimetres and it's barely touched any other sag whatsoever. And it's a still night on tent. The fog's coming in gonna absolutely soak this tent tonight and it'll sag anyway so he might be in for a rough night our Shauna me however I should be all right like I said earlier even though it is foggy the views are still pretty beautiful company's a bit stale but it's all right what's up Shauna don't you have a don't you have a pump to put your airbed up 
This is one I'll put in. And so invest in one of these flex tails, don't it? I'll be a good lad, I'll pump his mat up for him. So the first thing I like to do when I get in the tent, tents up, get my mat blown up and placed because you might find a rock inside underneath your tent, get it placed. I'm still using all the same sort of gear, you know, the light tar pad, that's up. Flex tail pillow, oh my yeah, sleeping bag. And I wanna get that lofted as soon as possible because it's been compressed in the bag all the trip. So you wanna get it lofted, get it up and then Organise everything else, look, got, got my snacks, my Pepsi. Me and Sean were just saying, you don't see normal Pepsi anymore, it's all that Pepsi Max business. This is the meals we've got going on. The Wayfarers, chicken tikka and rice. I'm gonna boil that in the bag to warm it up. I'm gonna get tea on go. We might as well get started now, aren't we? Today we're using the jobs with two and we're gonna have food by the waterfall so in poncho cracking out the jobs worth two i'm gonna get some water in that probably from the stream so that i'm making use of him somehow i don't never quite trust him though filling up our pots for our water with our water for our food but some people go, oh, don't use that water to cook with. Well, we're not actually using the water to cook with, we're just heating it up and using it as a, a water source to heat the food up. The packets, the food stays in the packets, so we never actually touch um, any of the dirty water with our mouths and stuff like that. But once you have boiled it, it does sterilise anyway, so you've got nothing to worry about when you're using water from a stream when you're using it in the way we're using it. So the pot's on the go, meal goes like this and you fold it, So if it in pot like that, you have to replace it so it doesn't fall over. You can buy the stems on the bottom of the canisters, but I've actually forgotten mine, so I'm just gonna move it around a bit. Or you can just use the lid like that. Always problem solving when you're out here. Shawnee is using his Christmas present that some say a legend bought him. Gaz. A different legend. You. Spruce on the loose. Spruce on the loose bought him this for uh, Christmas and it's his first time using it because I'm always cooking for him. Also got myself a new Breze. Got myself. Waiting for it. Oh! Spoon and spork set. Is it talks I hear ya? See? No, so no, it's not a talk spoon. You can get it cheaper. So it's a cheap Tito, it's called. And I picked this up for about eight quid. Long handle spoon. It'll do the trick when you're having packets like these. I've told him, why don't you go into my tent and once you see it, you'll know what's the dessert. And he's gone. I reckon he'll be quite happy. You found him. What is it? Stick it off with pudding. Midges go all around this place. Just uh, absolutely getting bitten and eaten. We didn't bring any repellent or anything. Another thing as well, just a reminder while Chris is cooking, is when it's been cooking and sat there for a while, just give it a, a mix up in the pouch. Gets all the cold bits out, spreads the heat, the warmth. Let's get that going. Shove it back in again for a couple of minutes. Do the same thing again. Sean, he's got the pudding steaming, ain't ya? One of them, ooh, one of them's in. We're just getting beaten up, eaten alive here. 
absolutely getting eaten. Might as well be getting beaten, haven't we? <laughs> awful, awful. Some of the fog's clearing up a bit and we've still got great view. Not that you can see it because I'm covering up the camera, aren't I? Nasty Curtis. But we've still got food on go, still warming up. Just getting absolutely bitten and eaten alive from midges. Built top away. Grab the spoon, I'll show you inside it. Chicken tikka and rice. Packets absolutely roasting. Um, quite hot to touch to be fair. Like that hot. But let's get cracking, shall we? I'll tell you the verdict now. That's a good tea, that. Good tea. It's hot. Tasty. Creamy as well. Really good. But yeah, we're going to crack on. All three of us, we're all going to have our meal. When we have my meal, Sean is going to have his meal and the midges are going to continue eating us, so they've got their meal on go. Uh, we'll crack on. Bring you back for the pud, shall I? One thing I forgot to uh, mention is that you can eat them cold as well, so if you are struggling, don't forget. If you haven't got any <coughs> heat or anything, your gas runs out, and you can still have a meal down here. So you can still eat them cold. Obviously, they won't be as nice, but we like our food hot. But still, it's a good option, isn't it? Whilst desserts are cooking, we've had a pleasant surprise. The fog's gone. Right, no messing around now. Desserts are done. I'm going to get them scrammed. Not both of them, Shawnee can have his I suppose. Oh, and then we're you. just getting into the tent because absolutely nightmare being bitten. I feel like a human pin needle. I'm going to get marks, it's going to look like I've got chicken pox in the morning probably. There we go, I felt bad. I didn't, I didn't want to leave you out and not show you, but that's dessert. Here we go, look. Yep. Mmm, lovely. Yep, let's get gone. After a mad dash back to the tent. I left Shawnee and all the bloody kerfuffle, just left him to get bitten. Mate, I love you, but I ain't, I ain't getting beaten and eaten, you know, for you. So, I'd do anything else for you, but midges, they're a no-go. Yeah, I just left him. So, sorry bud, but yeah, I, just, I had to do it. However, I did mention that if it weren't for Shawnee, I wouldn't be out tonight. And the reason for that is, um, a lot of people may or may not know I've been suffering quite badly at the moment. I've had a sort of like a mental or an emotional overload and I've been struggling, been struggling to get to work. I've been letting the team down. I've been, you know, quite unreliable. And it's uh, it's not a good trait really. It's my first time calling in sick for years uh, and I had the entire weekend off, which is obviously this time of trade. Uh, I had two days off uh, this week. Monday and Tuesday and I decided that I was just going to be a hermit really but Sean he said I'll finish work I'll come and get you and we'll go out camping and uh, you know him as well as many others have been absolutely brilliant you know coming to see me knocking on the door and uh, surprising me and just coming to be with me and support me uh, and the hardest bit is I don't know what what I can tell them, I can't explain to them why I'm feeling terrible. They're not bothered though, they've dragged me out. Um, I've had a really good distraction being able to talk to you guys on the camera as well. Being able to get out, have a really decent night camping and stuff and enjoy myself really, uh, with, along with Shawnee. I can't thank you a lot enough as well for your support uh, on the YouTube channel. You know, putting that lovely comments, being patient with me while trying to upload. Um, I'm still new to the game, you see, so I can't thank you all enough. So a huge thank you to Shawnee for getting me out tonight, and a massive huge thank you for all the team that support me at Yates, uh, at my workplace, massive family, and all my friends as well, just making sure that I'm okay. Right, I'm going to go and get a night lapse going, so I'm going to put the camera away. I'll bring you back before I go to bed. So one thing I did say would cheer me up 
Um, and it depends if I've actually used it as the thumbnail, but it might have been on the thumbnail as well. One thing I did say that would cheer me up is this amazing deal I got on this bag of white powder. Did you uh, guess what it is? Shall we give it, open it up, shall we, and give it a snifferoo? Mmm, smells good. Time to show you what it was. So it's 11 grams, only cost me 15p. Deal of the day from a proper, good, reliable source. Shall I show you what it is? It's a white hot chocolate sachet. Been searching forever for these to be able to take camping. Proper excited. It's the options, white hot chocolate. Tastes amazing. I bet you all thought it was somewhere else, didn't you? It's not that kind of channel I keep telling you on. So I'm not impressed. I'm about to hunker down and I've got midges in the tent and they're just swarming around biting me. So I'm probably gonna have to wear the buff. All night over the face. Um, there seems to be some other creeper calls in here as well. I'm off for two, I don't know how to get in, but they are. Um, I'm just gonna have to suffer. Sean and Winnaka, so he'll probably passed out as soon as he got into the tent. Bless him. And I'm not far behind him. Up very shortly, about five hours for the sunrise. And uh, hopefully, we'll get one this time because I've been missing them quite a few times. I've got my PJs on. Look at these bad boys and fluffy socks. I really don't think it'd be a cold night tonight, but I'm going to wear them anyway because they're comfy, warm. You know, it makes you kind of feel like you're at home. The mat's not too bad either. It kind of feels like my home bed as much as it can be, I suppose. Uh, it's just the mounds that I'm on, they're a bit uncomfy, but if I can work them to my advantage, I will. Other than that, hopefully I can get either the drone up for the sunrise or just capture the sunrise for you anyway. The fog and stuff keeps coming in and out of the valley. So we might catch it at a good point, we might not. I've worked out which way is east, as long as, you know, no one comes and gets us in the middle of the night or anything. So I shall see you in the morning. Good night. It's around quarter to 20 to 2 in the morning. Uh, just had a bit of a wake up because I've um, been bitten a couple of times. So it's annoying the hell out of me. And the wind's picked up. And it's not so bad on my tent, but bit of a worry from uh, Shawnee's side to up in Shawnee's tent is doing okay because I don't know if you can remember but it was a bit uneven where he pitched and the tent wasn't as taut so stuck my head out the sort of end and uh, got the torch and made sure he's um, okay so it's still up. His tent's still up, it's getting a bit of flappage going on. There's a bit of, you know, movement in it, but he's okay, it'll be fine. It's just a bit of wind in the valley. I don't think it's due to get any worse. And if not, he'll be bunking in with me. Well, will he? Might just leave him outside. Anyway, I'll, uh, Get off and then bring you back in the morning. Okay. Good morning. It's uh, 5 a 5 a.m. So I'm just awake. He's uh, shaking the tent. There's no way wind would shake a tent like that. Morning, Shauna. Uh, last night, pretty decent. There was about a billion and one planes flying over us though, because it's 
obviously like a flight path. So that's a shame. The wind did pick up quite a fair bit. Uh, not the best night's sleep I've ever had. The equipment was sort of comfy. The tent, fine. It's just maybe the ground I'm on, and uh, like I said, all the all the planes and stuff. Just had a look outside. It didn't seem to be too foggy, so we might get you a sunrise. Or I've woken up too late and we've missed the sunrise because I'm absolutely terrible. I just can't get sunrises for you, can I? Can't get them. Um, yeah. So I'm going to get up, I'm going to start packing some bits and see how Sean is doing and then see how we go from there, shall we? Absolutely windy this morning, just come out of the tent and I've uh, climbed up the side of the waterfall. Morning Sean, eh? But I think well, I think we might have you a sunrise ish. By the looks of it, it's going to be over there. So we're packed up, we're about to, we're just checking out the waterfall one last time and we're going to get out of here. Sun's rising, so once I'm up there, I'll get the drone up. Hopefully, the time lapse caught a bit of it but we're struggling to see it from down here, so we'll see how that goes, shall we? Get the drone up, on the way home, get some more drone footage in there, because I know you all love it. Then I hope uh, you enjoyed all the footage from the drone. I think I just got. The skies are just clearing out over there. Uh, we're on our way back now to the car. We've got a two hour track. I'm not going to do much filming. I don't think there'll be many bloopers on the blooper reel this time round. Uh, it depends if I can find any. But don't be disappointed because this whole trip I consider a massive blooper. Things are just going wrong at every single turn this time round. Unfortunately, not all of it's on camera. I bet you would have loved to see all that. But we're gonna head to the car now. We're gonna get back. Um, I'm gonna look to my friends to keep pushing me to do some more videos. Hopefully I have your support as well. I always have done, so I appreciate that. He's been Shauna, brought back Marston. I've been Curtis. It's Bruce. <laughs> it's Bruce on the loose. What's that, TTFN? TTFN. And thanks for watching. See you on the next one. It comes with, um, God, I'm having to redress. <laughs> comes with not having <laughs> Shawnee Bro. Shawnee Bro. <laughs> Just a uh, little bit of a poo come out then. Oh, I forgot my spoon. I am, I've got my spare. I brought a spare, just so turn that on. I can never get these camera handles right. Here we go.
go again. <laughs> Midges go war around this place. Absolutely. Yeah. They're having fun, aren't they? Yeah. Have you taken a video of me washing my foot? <laughs> you little shit. I look like they're on camera. 